Hi everybody. Uh, this is uh, welcome to the risk five boff. So we are just uh, continuing discussion where we left uh, the risk five MC. Uh, you, <clears throat> you might not have met uh, some of you might not have met Mark. Mark is the CTO of risk five international organization and he oversees the all the day to day things uh, for all the specifications, all the development going on uh, within the risk five international organization. Uh, we wanted his input on some of the things, so uh, we requested him to attend. Uh, thanks, Mark, for joining in. So, without further delay, I'd like to just uh, briefly state where we left and then start the discussion. So, this is where we left during the MC. Uh, we just to uh, give you an overview. Uh, this is more about this session. Uh, we'll discuss more about the platform specification, and uh, if time permits, uh, probably we'll discuss what to do with the D1. So this is where the platform specification is already there. Uh, it's stable from our side. So if you have any comments, uh, it, it's still going through the review process through the uh, distros and other community members. Uh, go take a look. If you have any comments, let us know. Broadly speaking, it has two us uh, two platforms. One is OSA platform, which is targeted towards the rich OS, such as Linux, FreeBSD, Windows, and uh, there is a base and a server extension. So base is targeted towards the minimal uh, boot minimal platform that can boot Linux, something like uh, Hi5 Unleashed or Unmatched, or let's say Alvino D1 or uh, Beagle 5. And server extension is obviously for enterprise. And then M platform is everything that doesn't boot, uh, it doesn't have AS mode or doesn't boot on uh, rich or something like Atos or bare metal. And it has a uh, PMP extension apart from the base. So for the M platform, since that uh, it's a wild, wild west area, uh, we can't really specify a lot of things. So base is really minimum things. And for security aspect, there's a PMP extension if the vendors want to. Uh, implement some kind of security and if they have a lower privilege mode such as SRU. And uh, the schedule is current target is to make it a uh, freeze by risk five summit, which is in December and we are working towards uh, that. Okay, uh, so <clears throat> as we discussed uh, during the risk five plumbers, here are the specification status in uh, that are relevant to platform or relevant to Linux. H, V, the PBMT extension that uh, modifies the page table attributes for the non-coherent non uh, non IO devices, uh, and then CMO, and then the counter overflow extension SCOP PMF, all of them are frozen. So they are under public review uh, in the public domain. Uh, we can go and take a look at the specification in the uh, I said their mailing list. I also sent a mail uh, mail to the Linux disk file. So all of these uh, extensions are frozen. So if any of those extensions that has patches pending in the mailing list can be uh, merged or can be at least reviewed and uh, get merged eventually now. So is this like the entire set of extensions that got frozen? No. There, there, there are more than those. So there's S time and then others, but those are the ones that are of immediate concern to our tissue. Um, yeah, so there. Are, I should also mention that there are others here that the the spec, the platform spec currently depends on that are. I'm coming to that. Not going to be frozen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, that uh, these are only the ISS specific extension. I only so there are a bunch of uh, specification that got frozen. I specified these. Uh, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I just just want to say um, there there is a on the website. There's a tech wiki right off the top, uh, and if you go there, it's, there's a URL table, and there's uh, something that says uh, uh, dashboards uh, for ratification. So you can go look there and see all the specifications that are uh, in play. If there was chat here, I can't find chat. Yeah, I, 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 would, uh, I would go ahead and put the link in. Um, you can put it in the shared notes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm having a hard time finding the share notes, but I, if I find on the them, left and up, on the left and up, yeah, not on my screen. So I'll try to find them. But uh, the the other thing, <laughs> so the other thing I wanted to say is we've only promised to Risk Five that uh, 
uh, the platform spec will be a draft mode at, um, at Summit. And part of the reason is, uh, and I, I don't know how much, Kumar, you've shared the, the dependency spreadsheet, but there's a whole bunch of other specs it's dependent upon. And I didn't want to go ahead and promise anything more than, than a, you know, a final draft kind of thing at that point, because I didn't know when those other specs were coming in. I don't have commitment dates on those. So we're trying to be conservative with that, uh, but rest assured, I mean, the goal is to get this frozen uh, and ratified, uh, you know, sometime in the first quarter of next year. Thanks, Mark. Uh, so the reason I specified these because the patches are pending on these. So there are other extensions uh, that went into public review and frozen. Uh, I sent an email with the detailed list uh, to the Linux RS5, so you can take a look. Coming back to the dependency on the platform, so these are the dependencies that we have on the platform specific and that are non-ISA. So mainly profile, so as Mark said, depending on when profile gets stable and frozen, uh, platform spec will only can be frozen after that. <clears throat> Other specifications uh, that are already, uh, that the platform specification depends and already are uh, more frozen is our EVBR, EFA, uh, we don't need any modifications to those. Then there is ACP specification. I think uh, over the period, ACP specification will uh, evolve as there is more feedback from the distros and uh, uh, from the ACP community. Yeah, Philip. You're saying something? Okay. And then uh, in terms of the interrupt control specification, the ACLINT and PLIC are frozen. And AIA uh, should be frozen soon. I don't know the timeline. Anup or Philip, any comment on when the AIA will be frozen? Uh, actually, there's, there's, there's one co a comment. So we are working on the um, on the process still. So if they click, uh, yeah, um, they aren't really frozen. They're just very cold at this point. Uh, okay. So we refer to them as stable, um, given that we, we're still fine tuning the process. Uh, SPI 0.3 is out. In that sense, because it was going through a different process. Uh, so they are similar to being frozen. So we don't expect any any changes, but they haven't gone down public review yet. And they haven't really reached the point where we can send them on to this call for public review just due to a, a process issue that is being resolved at the moment. Okay. So that's all I had for the specification related things. Uh, Power, any questions? One more, Atish. Atish uh, so SBI, uh, the recent release, uh, there was no process till now for the pure software conventions and specifications. So, so going forward, there will be a different process. But till now, I think we'll have to consider this as the release, right, Philip, or anything else with the existing it's, release? It's actually very simple. So we are we're moving SBI into the process and 0 0.3 is what it is. It's out, there is a software release that goes with it. Uh, so that exists and it exists outside of the risk five naming or, or label um, continuum. So SPI is V0.3, that one exists uh, and it goes but, with But software. is it frozen? Yeah. Yeah, it was never frozen on the SPX panel. No, it was. Well, I think so, the question. Yeah, the, the, 0.2 is frozen. Is no, 0 no, 0 no, the question is here: Is it likely to change? No. Any changes? No, no, no. That is it frozen? In... Is are you yes. guys providing a guarantee that you're not going to change this in a backwards compatible yes. fashion? Let okay. Mark speak for a second, please. Um, this is the first time we're going through this with a platform spec. There are a lot of constituents, including you know Palmer and Paul. And Krista and Andrew, and we're going through some one-on-one -on -one reviews in October. So uh, the intent is that there, you know, when we say frozen, we mean um, a there still could be change, but it's a very small set of changes. Uh, but because this is the first time we've gone through this review for non-ISA specifications, we're taking some extra time to go one-on-one -on -one reviews with various people who are constituents in the community to make sure we got everything right. So while you may hear the words frozen or whatever for this next generation of stuff, not the last generation, I'm talking about the stuff that's coming out with this platform spec, just understand that this is our first time and we're still figuring out how to do these reviews and get all the constituents uh, to the table. 
I've heard um, you know comments that there's some, some issues and I just encourage everybody, if you have issues, get onto the mailing list for the platform team and come out into the open. We can't have this stuff in, in you know incognito and do anything about it. Um, and so rumor and innuendo don't help at all. Um, we're we, you know we're trying to bring things into the light and just get them done. So uh, please be patient with us during this period of time um, and understand that again it's our first time through with this uh, big uh, uh, a platform spec and all dependence uh, and you know we hope to get everything right but you know we're human we won't. So, Mark, uh, what is funny about the platform spec in that instance? But I thought the discussion we were just having was about SBI, not about yeah. the platform so spec. So, for the SBI spec, uh, we'll not have uh, any major technical changes. Anything, any technique, if any, there is any feedback that comes up as a technical change, it will be in the next version. And but I see that. Say again, Philip. Said, which is similar to the definition of frozen because frozen yeah. just says it, there are no major or no no content changes and if that happens a new version needs to come out uh, okay well that is not my understanding of what frozen originally meant um, so okay. in, Palmer, uh, Palmer, one thing is that SBI is like one of those specs which will evolve over time. So uh, you will see like for a couple of years more, there'll be kind of, uh, yearly release or a bi-yearly release because uh, it, it will evolve, right? So so for this yeah, year, right. it is 0.3 and that is frozen. So there is no change in 0.3 now. So uh, my understanding of frozen did not mean that the spec was never going to change again. It meant that changes would be made in a fashion for which software could be compatible which is a very yes. different statement so yes. you know if sbi 0.4 comes out and there are no mechanisms in 0.4 for maintaining compatibility with 0.3 that's going to be a problem yeah so it will not break ads yeah sorry uh, so no i at least we can assure that that will never happen because that's been always goal from our 0 0.2 right we'll never yeah. break backward compatibility with any of the previous version starting so with that's version. how we got into this hey, hey folks, discussion. The, the, the state definitions are now in the shared notes these are the official state definitions every single spec has to have this at the top it is the the bible as to how this works yeah Pamela, you're seeing something yeah, because I'm just trying to point out that the whole reason we're in this situation about ASPI 0.3 is that between RC1, which you guys said was frozen, and the final release, there were, you know, substantive oh. changes. <laughs> there was one substantive change, which I made because I didn't think it was frozen, um, to the spec, right? So, like, is, is RC1? The frozen version like you said it was on the mailing list or is the final release the frozen version or are neither of them frozen like which one of these is going to be what i have to be compatible with for the rest of my life <laughs> well, you know, after, yeah after rc1 we did this final release and uh, that will be that is the final thing so, so, so which is go ahead so, so clearly, so you're saying that RC1 was not frozen and that I do not have to be compatible with RC1. So I think this was, that was a small change and then after that some typo fixes also happened, right? So no, but typo a, 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 changing something from recommended to must is only a one word change, but it's a big change. Does that make sense? Like <laughs> it's a small change in terms of letters. <laughs> it's a big change in terms of meaning. <laughs> Changing from must to may not is not an editorial change. Yeah, but so 0 0.3, uh, so we didn't have, we had an informal process like a software process for SBI, zero, SBI right? So uh, that's what we had done with 0 0.2 as well. We tagged a release candidate and then we did, just like any software, we did a release. That's what we did with 0 0.3 and we didn't have this nomenclature of stable, frozen and all those things because we didn't have any process for the st software or conventions, right? So. And that is yeah, the two. And if we, if we start labeling uh, stable, frozen, all those things with these tags, it's not fair because we didn't have a clear process defined at that point in time. 
Well, I, I mean, maybe I'm remembering this differently, but I remember pretty clearly standing up at that whatever meeting and saying that it was frozen and everybody agreeing to that and then merging the code. And that's what you know, we did uh, for the platform. We did that in the platform specification. In the wait, I was saying for, meeting. Sorry, I was saying for 0 0.2 of the SVI, right? Yeah, and at that point, that, that was... Uh, as much of a process as there was for freezing something. So we were freezing as much as anyone else did. We I, I guess that there's the, more, sorry. No, I'm saying we followed the same process for 0 0.3 as well, because we just said, uh, followed the precedent. We asked yeah, yeah, which is, guess, which I'm yeah. totally cool with my, 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 my confusion here is that when I asked, you said that RC one was frozen, right? And then there was a, you know, a change to the spec not not like a little wording change or whatever a change that actually changes the meaning of the spec and how we probe stuff and whatnot right so like i just i just need a clear okay so <laughs> okay let's not uh, term that had frozen because at that point in time we didn't have clear states okay it was a release candidate and we did the change and then we released the actual spec Okay, maybe so, I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe we're just a poor choice of words that a uh, release candidate. That's just a poor choice of word uh, used during the release candidate. But uh, zero dot three is the final one. Yep. Okay, so, specifically zero point three RC one is not frozen. No. Okay. And after that, we tagged zero dot three. It was waiting for any final review, just so, like you reviewed and did some change, right? So. But you told me on the mailing list that RC1 was frozen, that you froze it because you came on yeah. before yeah. you had released our 0.3 final and told me that it, it had been frozen for a long time. Like, that's my confusion here because you yeah. know, I, I think there's I, a lot of misuse hey guys term frozen. Yeah. Yes, guys, exactly. So, so, so from now on, let me make it very clear. Unless you hear from Philip that it's frozen, it's not frozen. He is the chairman of the, the chair of the, of the software committee. And he is the one who actually puts it up uh, to, to go out for public review. So if there was any confusion in the past, there should never be any confusion in the future. It's got to come from the software committee. It can't come from a committee underneath the software committee. Okay, great. Philip, can you send an email to the kernel mailing list saying exactly what was frozen for SBI and then we can go merge it? <laughs> Happily again, so that 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 was coming from before, and that's why I said this is still outside of the process. And I'll happily bless it as frozen at this point because we're not going to change it anymore, and anything else is going to be a new version. Okay, great. Can you just like write that in an email so there's no, no confusion no. about what it means in the whole song and dance, uh, right? Uh, uh, right. But let you. me <laughs> let me just uh, add one thing in. In the end. Uh, you know, Krista is the gatekeeper. Until Krista sees something, um, there's always some chance. And that's why we say frozen, which means that it's, uh, you know, we don't expect anything, uh, but it doesn't mean that nothing will happen. And, you know, again, Krista, you know, even with his very trusted lieutenants like Andrew, you know, after they say something, sometimes he reviews it and finds things that, that need to be addressed. And so Chris, I know, I, I know Kirsten. <laughs> so, 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 so Mark, that's, why, that's why these guys are doing one on one reviews with Krista of the platform and all the subsidiary specs in October, because if they don't do that, there's a chance that this stuff will will, um, you, you know, more more than we would like. And we don't want that. So we're taking the bull by the horns. Uh, we're having a one on one with Andrew. We're having a one on one with Krista. If anybody else on the phone feels like they need to do the same thing, uh, please, please contact Kumar, who drives the, the platform um, horizontal subcommittee. So, so I think one of the most important things that really needs to happen here is that these processes for how this all works needs to be documented publicly. Um, and the exact meanings of what it means to be frozen, that should be a very special word that no one should use unless it's actually been frozen by RVI. And if it needs Kirsten's sign off for it to be frozen, which I'm still unclear about, or, or some other committee's sign off for it to be frozen, then this really needs to be clearly documented. So guess what? It is clearly documented. 
and please put it in the notes. It, like, it, where can we it, find I'm this? I'm putting the, the policy in the notes right this second. Just hold on. Um, but but let me make let me explain. All the chairs of all the committees have to sign off for the plan milestone, the frozen milestone, and the vote ready milestone. So, it, it, so it's not just Krista. It's Greg for Umpriv. It's um, uh, you know um, uh, Andrew Dello for security. Um, it's Wei Wu for the ISA infrastructure. Um, and it's John Liddell for the technology sector. So those are the committee chairs that we have at the moment. And they need to sign off, um, and I need to sign off before anything goes to a, a new milestone state. Okay, so has this happened with 0 0.3 for SBI? Like I said, Paul, uh, there was no process till now, and uh, not just SBI, we also have PSABI specs, which are also under the same purview because these are software conventions. and. Going forward, there will be a new process for such specific, which are pure software conventions, okay, or conventions, so to well, say, be different from. Yeah, so that's what Philip is doing, right? So Philip can elaborate that. So. Yeah, I, I just want to say one more thing. Um, there, there is a non-ISA definition of done spec as well, uh, which requires um, you know certain things to be done at these points, and uh, you know people like uh, Gaj and and. Um, uh, Greg uh, helped put that together. So I'm putting those links in the chat as well. Okay, okay so, so just, to, to, just to be clear, to, then, so 0 0.3 is not yet frozen from RVI's point of view. Uh, until it passes through the DOD, it can't be frozen. Okay. Again, with, with SBI 0 0.3, we've just talked about it on Wednesday. We have special situations since that is coming out of the old process and out of the open SBI project. So, so the other thing is that's why we have the stable milestone. Stable says it's ready to be frozen, but we have to you know, dot the I's and cross the T's. And so my suggestion, Philip, is call this stable, let's go through the process as defined and, um, and make sure that uh, everybody understands you know, what the process is. Um, question to Palma, is stable good enough for you? No. <laughs> Stable has a long history of being not good enough. So yeah, I can I consider stable to be a completely meaningless term based on how it has been defined in the past. If there's yeah, a new I definition, agree. I'm happy to read it. Yeah, and if I call that. it the new stable. You call what? Stable. It's Sorry, I think stable. it's it's like cutting off the first word or two of what you say. <laughs> that, that doesn't matter. I, mean, I, I said the new stable, given that the old stable was apparently not stable. So yeah, it, like if you have a new definition of stable and I'm happy to read it, I think Mark might have linked to it. I could try to read it. Probably won't be able to do that in real time right now. Um, also, I'm like falling asleep again. So um, anyway, if there's a definition, I will read it and then we can discuss whether or not that's suitable. But like sta stable before basically meant like <laughs> the exact binary of that spec is not changing, but we're not considering it all when doing future specs, which is like, that doesn't help me. Anymore. So, so look, folks, I, I'd rather us take a little extra time and get this right, because in the community, there's been a lot of frustration and, you know, we don't want that. We want this to be done right. I mean, everybody wants this to be done right. We're not, Yeah. you should not rush this um, with respect to this. If, if there's reviews that need to occur and we know there are reviews that need to occur um let's get those done before we go ahead and call this thing frozen um, yeah i agree that's why we're just trying to make sure that everyone's on the same page about frozen being a very big deal for the software folks well, and not so so just yeah, let's take this step back maybe let's take this back back maybe um mark you mentioned before that we have ice and non ice but actually we're trying to subdivide the non-ISA into non-ISA as in hardware like debug and software only, software conventions. Right. Uh, but given that that's a different life cycle. Yeah, but you're not going to get away from the sign-offs. Yeah, um, no. it, a lot of these not, specs that are probably most likely to be defined as software only specs are actually going to wind up having hardware implications in certain cases yeah. so we need to be really careful about that hey, hey, hey look folks i just want to tell everybody on the phone part of the reason why you see these policies sitting here and why you see this discussion occurring is because we care about this okay 
And we're not trying to be cavalier about this stuff. We're trying to go ahead and make it reproducible, make it well known so everybody knows what the rules of the game are. And we're trying to make sure that, you know, we have consistent buy-in inside of RBI because, um, you know, at times we have not. And that's the goal of this. So um, the definition of done is for people who don't know, that's the list of things that need to be done for each milestone. And, and so the definition of done uh, includes um, sign off. The sign off is required no matter what kind of document or specification it is. Um, and, and, you know, for example, security needs to sign off on everything. I'm sorry, they need to see it, right? And, and so, um, so even if the other timeline and, and, and roadway to get to ratification is simpler or easier for some kind of specs, um, we, we still need to do some basic stuff. Yeah, I think it's why it's very important that people don't throw around the word frozen unless it is actually frozen because it gets very confusing. Okay. Um, and I'll apologize in advance. Those documents are not small. Uh, so the ratification one is quite long. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's relatively new. Nobody wrote down what it took to ratify until the summer when, when this thing was created. So, uh, so it's a relatively new document. If you find something that's wrong, help us make it better, please. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. This is a, like ISAs are a complicated process. It's just that we really need to know what it is that we are like meant to be looking at in order to have any shot at building something around it. So one thing to remember is we're also having that, that ongoing um, tagging here or ongoing pull from different sites. So, so some people need things to be done faster to avoid fragmentation uh, or to sum off fragmentation while, while on the other hand, we can't really uh, force things to be completed and need to take our time and go through the process and run it uh, by everyone uh, and reviewing everything by security, for example, takes a lot of time. And also software has a lot of things to review these days. So um, that said, we, we're really trying to, to move forward as well and take fast track approaches, uh, simplify the software specifications uh, to avoid fragmentation occurring because some people just don't want to wait. And as we've seen with the, the, the page table uh, attributes, the, the page based memory types for back to 0 0.7. Okay. Uh, I think in, in the interest of time, let's move to the next topic. And just to summarize here, so from a uh, task group that worked on SBA specification, we consider it stable slash frozen, whatever you want to call it, because we don't expect any changes. But as soon as there is a process defined for software right, specification. Sorry, but hang on. It's not stable or frozen or whatever you want to call it. We just talked about not throwing no, 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 no. the word frozen. I'm not throwing. That's what I'm saying. From saying well, from I did. No, I just said. <laughs> Okay, you guys, I, you guys, you I just said we, are, we, are, we don't expect we don't expect any changes, but as soon as the process is defined, we'll go through the process, and uh, from RVI it will be called frozen or after the feedback, whatever happens. And uh, as as per my understanding, uh, on the RISC website also, any frozen or ratified document will be uploaded for everybody's uh, so that everybody can take a look into, and SBA will also be included in there in a couple of months. I don't know when that will happen. But uh, let's move to the next topic uh, for ACPI. So there are, uh, in the MC, there are some feedback that uh, whether the distros want ACPI or not. As for our initial feedback with the distros, they want ACPI. So that that's why, uh, for the server, not for the base. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Did you skip to the next slide or are you on the same no, slide? No, no, I have the same slide. Just uh, I'm talking about the ACPA specification. Okay. So uh, just wanted to clarify that uh, we had an initial call with uh, Red Hat and then they suggested that we should have ACPA for server platforms. Is that correct, Kumar? That's correct. Al, I think Al is on the call, right? So Al, uh, your feedback here with everybody on would be really appreciated, right? So we briefly spoke a couple of months back and the feedback that you had was for server specifically, uh, the boot process would be UEFI and the discovery process would be ACPI, right? So that's something that we had agreed on. 
And just wanted your feedback again with the rule. Yeah, I mean the basic rule is if you're going to run RHEL, you will you will provide UEFI, you will provide ACPI. The the closest it, the closer it looks to the SBBR and SBSA requirements, the better. Okay. That that is still true. Okay. And then again, uh, just to expand on to that, th thanks a lot, Al. That consistent with what we spoke earlier. And uh, if there is anybody, any other distro vendor in the room today in the meeting, please provide your feedback. Uh, yes, please yes. do not make me suffer through any of this crap anymore. I deal with this on Fedora. I deal with this on OpenSUSE. I deal with this on Magi. I deal with this on Open Mandriva. I don't want to deal with this with the Risk Five bring up. Please, for the love of all things good and sane, make it so I don't have to figure out how the bloody hardware works to start the computer. Okay, in which distro is this that you're representing? And, and also, uh, which direction is crap? Because people have different opinions on that one. <laughs> well done, Palmer. Yeah, I, I, I guess we might have misunderstood that. And the, the, the real request was to bring device creep back. It's the only true solution. Yeah, j just I, please be uh, specific. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's getting a stake in the heart for that suggestion. <laughs> uh, I, I still remember open firmware, and it wasn't all faulty. I basic, what my, my basic ask is I, I generally don't actually care which way it is done, whether it's ACPI or device free or whatever, but I want in the, what I would love as a distro developer is that in the actual standard that it is burned into the board. It is on the double E prom and I don't have to care about it and it cannot be updated. So the onus is on the hardware vendor to make sure it works because okay, that is well, the problem with ARM and MIPS and everybody yeah. else. Now you're, you're going gonna to start a whole care. other <laughs> argument, so sorry. You know what? I, I don't I, care. I, I will too. die on this hill. <laughs> I will die on this hill. Like, I'm not I, 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 because People have been like arguing about this, this for like, like at least 10 years. Yeah, like the, even on PCs, right, you're always going to have the, the ability to update those tables, right, with BIOS updates. So yes, but it's not my responsibility. Not it is not my responsibility. I don't want to be responsible for that. I don't know anything about anything. Please don't make me have to think about it. No, I think I think point taken, right? I think the whole idea here is that OS is completely agnostic to whatever the hell is happening in the in the firmware and the BIOS, right? And that's the whole idea here that we're trying to achieve. Well, it, yeah. it, but I but I think part of Neil's point though is that. Um, we, 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 we insist on standards all over the place, right? And what the hardware vendors do is say, that's that's nice, we're gonna do whatever the hell we feel like doing. Like, um, that's just, that, that ain't gonna work, right? It just, it makes life miserable for, for Neil, makes life miserable for Rel. Uh, no, don't do that. Um, <laughs> yes, you can update your firmware and please do. That would be really nice for a change. Um, but don't make that mean that I, as the distro developer, have to understand exactly what you have done in your hardware and how it works. It, okay. Well, this this issue that we're not going to solve it. It's not specific to Risk Five, right? This this happens with all the ISAs. So I, I don't. This is not something that I think we have the ability to solve. Well, and uh, traditionally, traditionally the way that solve, this is solved is, is logo programs, right? It's finding ways to give the, the hardware right. vendors incentives to do the right thing. Yeah. Right. I assume we have a slide to argue about that one, though, too. So. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So, in leading to that discussion. Is. So, that's exactly what I wanted to discuss next is how do we make platform specifics and mandatory or do you even need to and how do we deal with logo branding so that uh, so, so vendor actually so, follows this so first of all Atish, let me stop you there because you got the the, the branding wrong it's risk five compatible with the osa or for the osa platform it starts always with risk five compatible yeah because that's what we trademarked 
Um, and then four is the adornment. Four, um, and typically we use a profile or a platform name. Oh, oh, that part I intentionally left because that's what is fixed, right? So that's a common prefix. What we worried about is the postfix. No, it says home is a cost for very long email spread. So please always use it correctly because otherwise okay. your inbox will fill up quickly. Okay. So yeah, so so one comment also is that the, the risk five platform specification, at least from the point of view of many of the upstream software projects, will never be mandatory. There will always be boards or devices, whatever, that won't that won't align to that. It's we see the same thing with ARM because a lot of embedded users won't won't care about the platform spec. They won't they won't care about PCI or whatever, so they won't put in PCI. Yeah, that's the magic of, of RISC V. Not only do they not have to conform to that, they don't have to conform to the instructions, right? So they, then they don't call themselves RISC V. That's that's well, that simple. <laughs> well, they can't brand um, if they are um, you know non-conforming and compatible. Uh, but there's a lot of room for customization on top of the base, right? So that people do have the flexibility to do stuff and still be compatible. And, you know, if you do anything above and beyond, obviously you're on your own. Uh, but, but, but again, I mean, I, I agree with what Paul just said. There's always going to be divergence. Um, you know, we, we're just trying to make it as easy as possible to run the same in the end run the same application from implementation to implementation that's the end goal it feels like you y'all don't want to say that not just the isa but like the way that the the hardware is configured shouldn't be you it's like you I, it feels like you don't want to say that in order to call yourself a, a risk five system you don't want to actually say you don't want to prescribe that some minimum requirements on the hardware is necessary. You won't, and that is his flaw. I, I, think, I think it's contrary to that, actually. I mean, the whole purpose of the platform spec is to constrain it. So, so it doesn't seem like it. Mark, Mark, maybe, maybe let me jump in and explain it a bit, because um, actually we are saying that if you want to grant yourself a Swiss five compatible, you have to have minimum requirements, but it depends what you do it for. Maybe we take two steps back and not just one, because all that we're doing with the platforms with OSA only matters to people who want to take a ready-made piece of software and run that on a piece of hardware and that want to go get their hardware and then get their software. So basically somebody buys Red Hat Enterprise Linux and wants to know whether it runs on the server that they are buying. So those are the only use cases where, where, where this branding really matters. And on the embedded side, we're more talking about source code compatibility. And there it's also about, I get the chip, I want to design with that chip, and I have the software, those libraries. It, is the porting overhead going to be small? So the, this branding only works there. And then, yes, we have RISC V compatible uh, with the with the base specification, with the platforms, with the, the ISA. Uh, again, that only matters to people who want to know what they are buying. And uh, unfortunately, the, the use cases are quite different for embedded uh, server desktop. And, and for that reason, there's, there's that flexibility. But I would also argue that you've got the same issue on the embedded system side, right? So there, there's there's essentially two classes of embedded systems, right? The one you're talking about where God only knows what they've done, right? And and only they know and, and nobody else is going to find out. But then there's also the, I need a subset of SUSE, Fedora, whatever it might be, and I, and I want to just run that. So you need standards for that as well, right? And, and part of the system ready project that ARM is working on, that's actually part of the, the environment that they're working for as well. Can't hear you, Philip. Philip, I don't hear you. Hey, just, just for time check here. I'll unmute yeah. it, sorry. So um, that, the problem is that is exactly OSA. So OSA has a base and has a service. Thing. 
And if you're targeting okay. automotive patterns, you probably always say base. Okay. Uh, or some future extension. Uh, we have M, which is source code compatibility for uh, embedded control. You're trying to port your motor controller to something else. Um, and and that, that's what we're trying to do. And that is God knows what, if you're building a Bluetooth headset and nobody else is ever going to run software on it. Are you still two minutes? That's not fair. Uh. <laughs> I think we need uh, more discussion. Do you want? So, does the, everybody has time? Uh, can we move to a hack room after this? I unfortunately have a big meeting after this. So. Okay. Okay then. May, so, I don't know. Maybe we can. Find something I, else. I, I I've got my whole day free. I can I can sit here and argue with everyone as much as you want. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there is a platform HSC meeting coming up soon. So, so I would say we all reconvene in one of the many risk five meetings because pretty much everybody is going to be a member anyway. Well, I'm not, but like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can join it the risk money. five dot org. Yeah, but it costs money, and I don't have no. any. No, it's no. free. It's free. free for individuals. It's free for individuals. Oh, okay. Well, then that changes things a little bit. <laughs> okay. Any. <clears throat> So it just costs time to actually participate. Oh, that's easy. And it ropes you into a bunch of IP stuff, but that's all, you know. <laughs> oh, that's less easy. Okay, so any any conclusion? How do we make uh, vendors care about the specific platform specification? Well, I thought that uh, you guys were reaching out to all of the the major Linux distribution folks. Oh, no, no, I'm not talking about review, right? Yes, we, as per the last slide, we already have discussion with Canonical, Red Hat and Suze, uh, it's scheduled next week. No, but I'm worried about, uh, we'll get the feedback from the distros uh, and then the specification will be done. But uh, Palmer's concern was, what happens vendor, uh, platform vendors, not the uh, distros. Yeah, platform and, vendors and don't just care about the branding. So my worry was sorry. Go ahead, go My my worry was more broadly than a platform spec. Like the D one, like repurposes reserved bits of the supervisor spec, which is super scary on my end because then, like, if if that is still called Risk Five, like what isn't? <laughs> hey, hey guys here. Hello. Yeah, you mentioned the D1. Yeah. Yeah, the D1, uh, we designed the D1 in the 2019, uh, two years ago. And at that time, we don't have any spec to follow, and there are no solution uh, for the non concurrency DMA. Yeah. And uh, we found a, a customer, a winner. He, 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 is, uh, he used to be a uh, uh, arm based SOC manufacturer, yeah. Uh, and all his driver is. Uh, is I got, got, is we're getting the boot from James there. So. Yeah, uh, you're going to get booted out here by me yeah. soon. You, you can take this to a hack room. We have plenty of hack rooms yeah. free. Sorry. It won't be recorded, but you can okay. take that. That's even better. <laughs> yeah, then I can say what I really feel. <laughs> all right. Okay, I think we can continue uh, this discussion on the mailing list or uh, please attend the uh, platform working group meetings and then we continue discuss on this one. Okay. Thanks uh, everybody. Uh, that's a great I have to is, uh, a standard SVPBMT, uh, how long we could uh, merge into the Unix? I mean the standard uh, SVPBMT. I think Go will be kicked out in a, like 30 seconds. So, right, it will. Yeah. Okay. Let's discuss in the mailing list. Uh, okay. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.